welcome back. We are going to be finishing off uh, page one and uh, page two, which is on hinge one. We'll finish those off for sure tonight. And then if we've got some time, I'll keep going on adding some other pieces and parts to this. So I tried to get some things cut ahead of time. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, get going on those. And I'm going to apologize right up front. Uh, my my boys or my lads, uh, the dogs, are in the room with me tonight. So if you hear a little bit of uh, playing around or fussing around, uh, that is going to be from them. So uh, if it gets too loud, I will turn turn everything off, <laughs> or I'll turn it off and uh, get going. So the first thing that we're going to be doing uh, this evening is we're going to make a pocket for this page and then we're going to put our waterfall pieces on here and our pocket that we are going to cut out or cut out of the navy blue papers is ten and a half ten and a half by six and a half and what we're going to do is score a half inch all the way around on this on each side so to create the gusset for the pocket. Oops, wrong one. How's everybody doing? I hope that everybody is staying safe at home and um, taking care with this virus. And I hope no one has that and no one in your family has. I hope you've all been safe. So what we're actually going to do with this is we're going to put our waterfall on here so that um, there is room for uh, something underneath it. And then what we're going to do with this is we're going to trim or miter the edges on our pocket. I'm going to put this um, all together. I'm not going to put it on the book yet, but I want to uh, put it all together so that we can glue everything down on a flat surface while we are getting our pockets ready. So, next, what we're going to do is you need to get your waterfall ready. So, you're going to need eight eight waterfall pieces and they're six by six so it doesn't matter what side you do a half inch score on wherever you're most comfortable doing that score you're going to score each one of those at a half an inch and what I've done with any of the papers for the waterfalls or the pockets well this is doesn't go the pocket here isn't going to have paper on it but um, I do everything an eighth of an inch smaller, approximately eighth of an inch smaller. So if it's a six by six, and then with the half inch, it, so it'll be six by five and a half, you're going to cut um, the top piece of paper for this at um, five and seven eighths by five and three eighths. That's just going to be the top one. The ones down on the bottom here are going to be uh, five and seven eighths by three quarters. I use a three quarter inch piece of paper for that. Um, most people I think a lot of times use a half inch but sometimes I find that something might not sit quite right and so it's a, it, um, I cut it to three quarters of an inch. So it's really up to you, whatever you would like to do and what you're most comfortable with, whether you're gonna make it a half inch or a quarter inch. And then just take your waterfall hinges and we're going to score all of those. And a lot of times on a waterfall, unless I'm putting it into, you know, underneath the paper itself, like I cut slices in and I want the paper right behind it. Um, I don't miter the edges on the waterfalls. 
because I use that for matching up as I go down on the pocket. If I have a pocket or, um, you know, just so that it's as even as I possibly can get it as I'm putting that into the book. All right. And as we go along, I have done a vintage photo on the edging of all the papers, or that's my plan to do it on all of them. And then I want to um, show you um, for this page, um, we are using um, the signature page to uh, mat the front of uh, the front of these items. So this is this is the other half of the signature page, and then um, the half that. It, the other half of it, with the pair on it, it lines up like this. So this is what this is what we cut off. And what I ended up doing is I I ended up cutting this square uh, on the top because I wanted to catch the bottom of those um, apple squares. So I ended up cutting them right where I wanted on here. And then I went and measured. So this is going to be this is going to be five and three eighths here. So I cut off here, and then I measured from here to here five and three eighths, and then I trimmed whatever was left on the top. And it was basically, I think it was just some purple uh, paper left on the top. So this is this is going to be using most of your signature page. This I might have to cut down a little bit. I was matching it up, so I may have to take a little bit off here or a little bit off here. But um, that's how we use that whole page for this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I would like to work on getting our our pockets, or I mean, I'm sorry, my water, our waterfalls onto the pages. Sorry, I need to score this a little better. It's not laying very flat. And I am using navy blue artisan cardstock from uh, Country Craft Creations, where this design kit came from as well. So, and I have to tell you, it's uh, I haven't used a million different kinds of cardstock or paper, but this is a linen cardstock and I really enjoy it. I think that it really, it doesn't crack. There are, a, I shouldn't say it doesn't ever, there are rare occasions that it'll crack when maybe we've had it for a long time and it um, got really dried out because it's next to a furnace or something like that. But for me, I have had great luck with that. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go along here and we are just going to match up our waterfall all the way down and along here. So oh, I think I left my I think I left my uh, sorry. You can hear the boys in the background. And the thing is, is the boys aren't little boys. <laughs> the boys are big boys. They are um, mastiffs. They're an Italian mastiff called a canicorso. And, oh my goodness gracious. So they, we have one that is, mm, I think he's 16 months old. And he weighs over 125 pounds. And our two and a half year old, he weighs about 95 pounds, so um, they are not small little guys, <laughs> but we love them because they're babies. So I'm going to just take this along here, and what I am going to do is to continue to layer my um, hinges, right, butt that right up against that next one, and 
what I want to do is try to keep it as straight as I possibly can. So I'm going to pull this down and make sure I'm edging this around as well and making sure I'm even the best that I can. Um, as we say, there's no perfection in crafting. I'm going to have to stop for just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Referee here. And part of the reason why I cut this pocket exactly the same as my waterfall is that it would help me line it up uh, side to side as well as up and down. I just found that I've had better luck when I use this. And I'm sure that this has been, other people have done this as well. A little bit off there, but I think it'll be fine. They might have other ways to mat or put the waterfalls on their in their in their books, but this for me has been my most successful way of doing a waterfall. Oh goodness, you should have seen the first waterfall I ever did. Thought it was so straight, and it was my goodness, it was so wonky. <laughs> And they're not so hard to do, it's just having the patience um, to make sure you're lining everything up right. And for these waterfalls, I'm not sure if I, if I said this or not, but I have um, cut eight of these flaps. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Out of breath with those boys. Just like little kids. You know, they can lay perfectly still and not make any noise until I turn the camera on. And This is going to be the last one. That we're going to put on here. So when we put this all down, boy, I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think when I did it originally, I did this so that I gave them like three quarters of an inch in between the whole um, waterfall. So I think we're going to end up doing something probably different down here. But let's just take a look. Maybe we'll add a pocket or something down here to uh, finish that off. I'll have to see what I've got left in order to... So there's really no right or wrong way of doing it. This was all done by half inch, half inches. And when I did it in my original book, I'm sorry, I wasn't even thinking, I had um, done these so that there was, I think, a little bit of space in between there. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the same number as I just did. I don't know why it's so different to what I did before. I have everything, I don't know. 
I am going to um, do one thing really quick. I want to check the edges of this. Oh, I guess we're okay. So what I'm going what I would like to do is I'm going to take this paper and we're going to get this down and then we're going to mat the rest of it and then we'll put the pocket and the waterfall on the page and we'll see how that all fits and see how we can make an adjustment and maybe it'll be a good idea like I said to put a pocket down below or um, maybe another color of the paper we'll just see what works best as I say I have to kind of bob and weave here when I'm Sometimes um, it's not always turning out exactly the same. Here I go ripping up paper again. I think I should match that up first. There we go. I don't care if there's a little bit wider edge up here, but I wanted it to be a little bit more narrow down here at the bottom of the the page so that I had something that was a little bit straighter along there. And then what I did is I took each one of these um, are going to fit on the next each next page as we go down. And it again it will be a little bit off but it's not going to be off by that much. So again I have vintage photo this is um, five five and uh, seven eighths by three quarters of an inch. And just to make sure you keep them in a row. And when I did this waterfall, I also wanted to tell you, I did not put anything in between um, the waterfall. This is something that I'll do when I go back in, and I have extra pieces or items left over. Um, I, don't, I, won't, I didn't do it yet because I wanted to get going on the tutorial. So I, I finished up what I was working on and then I'll still go back and with the scraps that I have, I'll fill that in. I probably will not put a photo mat though on the inside of this because I don't want it to get to be too, too big. Or I shouldn't say big as much as I should say more. I want it to stay a little flatter. So you can see how that is working its design going down. Actually, this is probably only the second time that I've I've done this kind of a waterfall, so I might try it next time doing the, the half inch and see how that turns out for me. But right now I thought the quarter inch was what I wanted. But totally up to you. The other thing that we're going to do uh, before we put this on the page is I would like to get our hinge or our belt or buckle going across the, the pocket so that we um, can get that the edges of the buckle underneath the pocket. I had a comment the other day from a, a viewer, which I, again, I just so appreciate any feedback that I get, that um, she was a little disappointed that we didn't get through the, um, the whole uh, first page. Uh-oh, <laughs> watch me. No, I'm still on here. Um, and it's, when I do the timing of this, what I try to do, and you guys tell me 
you know what you like or not like um, because it's really I want to do this so that you guys are getting the most out of it that you can uh, about an hour and a half video and what I try to do is I try to do the video about an hour and then um, but the side work meaning the cutting and scoring and those kinds of things that I don't do on camera would probably be another half hour worth of you know worth of work that's kind of how I've done done it um, because the last time I, I did a video that was an hour and a half and I had a really really tough time uploading it YouTube did not like um, the upload it actually took me almost a day and a half to upload a, an hour and a half video which it could have been just the traffic that you know at that time and maybe that won't happen again but um, that's part of the reason why I've stayed to more of an hour so I'm not really sure why um, it would do that but I'm going to kind of do a mixture of things so I have this that I could put this into here and finish off and then I think I can do possibly uh, a cutting of this purple paper is what I think I'm going to do uh, for mine um, just fit that underneath there and then I will do uh, a piece of purple paper here and possibly um, a different color underneath there um, right now right now I have that left empty and I, I will have to put something in there because you can see I have the writing on there but uh, I think this will work pretty good for now so just what you want to do when you get to a point like this you can um, just take your off cuts uh, whatever you think um, would work well and so your scraps and things like that and sometimes sometimes I put those uh, down right when I'm when I'm working on it and sometimes I I wait more till the end so that I can um, so that I can use uh, the the best scraps that I have and that I'm not cutting into other pieces that may not work. So that's how we're going to fix that one. <laughs> so I think I have a purple off cut in my box. Pretty sure I do. Actually, I think I'm going to use this side, I believe. So, you like that? Or is that too busy? It might be too busy. You know what? I'm just going to leave that empty for right now, and I'm going to come back to that for my book, and let me see where I am at with that. Why do I have a feeling that, you know what, <laughs> this is why this wasn't the same, was because I cut this paper too big. How, you know what, I think I did that the last time as well. Oh goodness, now everybody's going to have a really good laugh at me. Now this ended up being 11 inches. How did I do that? Did I grab the wrong piece? Ugh. It was supposed to be... Ten and a half. Isn't that what I said? Goodness gracious. Ten and a half by six and a half. And then to score a half inch on either side. So that makes it nine and a half. What did I do? I don't know. Boy, oh boy. Again... Not that it's going to matter that much, but so I need that to be nine and a half. 
so I am I am so sorry um, I can't believe I gave you the right um, at ten and a half and a half and a half gives you nine and a half so that should have worked I don't know why I, I think I did this the last time as well I am looking for my pencil what did I do with it there we go all right oh goodness gracious I'm so sorry so I need it to be nine and a half and this is nine and three quarters so I think I need it to be right about here so I want a half inch for my for my hinge so I'm going to have to How about that? We just cut it off. And we'll see how it works. You know, that should have been the telltale sign for me when it was, the cutting was way off like that. I should have uh, gone back and looked at um, what I had done. So I'm going to go in and I'm actually just because I've already done that, I'm going to leave that paper um, on there. And I'm going to score at a half an inch. And I'm going to fold it so that paper just goes underneath. And we will see what happens. <laughs> if it doesn't work well, then I will have to just cover it with some kind of cutting or, you know, another piece um, on the bottom there. All right. Are you all having a good laugh at me? <laughs> I should list this as Comedy of Errors tutorial. Now this is going to be, you know what, I think I can, I think I can even take some of this off on the hinge. I think I might just do that because it's not folding very good. So let's see what I can, how successful I can be at this. And if I really mess it up, well, <laughs> I'm just going to move on to the next page or the next spot and come back to this. But I think this should be good for right now. And I can cut the rest of that off later. So, alrighty. So... Done really well. Got that there. And this will come down like that. All right. Will it work on our page? <laughs> it's called bobbing and weaving till you get it right. There we go. That'll work. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I try to get these sides down properly, get this laying flat. Don't want it to lay too up too high. There we go. And we need to make sure that we put our To put our flap on here as well so I want to do that before I glue it down or that could have been not a disaster but it would have been not a good thing or it would not have made me happy <laughs> so what we're going to be using is where'd my paper go
There we go. So what I have for the, the tabs for this waterfall, I cut these at one and three quarters by four and a half. And what we're going to do is on either end, I score this at a half an inch and another half an inch so that we have a bit of a gusset for this. And then we're going to cover over just the top of this flap. I am not going to cover over the edges. Again, I did that on the last one because I thought I would really like it. But what happened is, is that um, it just, the paper uh, kept coming off. It just didn't stay nicely or lay nicely because of the movement on, uh, on the book. So I want to do this so that I can have a gusset and we're going to do this on both sides. just fold that in and then I will miter the edges on this I have is I'm going to go ahead and we will get this put underneath our pocket so when it goes down on the um, goes down for the pocket it will um, it will uh, be tucked under the pocket now this has a little bit of room in here because I fully expect this to grow significantly once pictures are added in. So you might feel like it's a little bit floppy at first or it's got too much room. If you don't like it, then score it at um, a quarter of an inch rather than a half an inch. But I think that we're going, you know, this will fill up significantly because you've got the pocket behind here. Plus if you put pictures here and here, on um, the waterfall you're going to there'll be a lot of uh, bulk to that so I'm just going to put one of these down and then I'm going to match it up to the other side so that they work together and we'll get a magnet and cover it up with uh, pattern paper as well So that's going to come right here. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm trying to be very careful about is um, uh, making sure this is straight when it goes down. So then this side, this will come over to this side and we want to match that up. So what I'm going to do is take a paper clip and see if that'll hold it better for me while I get this side glued down. That works. And we can cover all of this once we, oh, I got that a little bit off, I think. Sorry. I'm sorry if I pull this down too far or not far enough, you know, for you to see. So I think we're good right there. And what we're going to do is uh, cover the inside and the outside. So I've chosen, on the other book, I did, I had some red cutoffs, but I thought I would try the purple this time. So I'm going to be using uh, purple inside rather than 
that red. But that's your choice. Anything that you have for um, extra cutoffs, there's not a right or wrong, uh, you know, to be put on there. So the one thing that um, we want to do is this one is going to be on top. So I want to make sure that I, when we overlap here that I have the magnet underneath uh, the bottom and then it's on the top here. So I'm going to use a larger magnet so that we have so that it's pretty sturdy. And I think I'm just going to see if I can if it'll overlap and we'll be okay at that. Don't like to pull it back too far. Yeah, that's just that's just about right. We're not going to get away with that going back much further. See that sometimes they just come right off and other times it's a battle. The battle of the magnet. <laughs> All right. So then again, I want to take this and make sure that when I'm putting this down that I'm making sure that it's not all crushed in, that it's exactly where I want it to be so that it will line up uh, once we get the paper and everything on. Yes, line up, but it doesn't want to come apart. I usually don't have any issue with that. See, this is even a little bit... I am going to take this off and I'm going to push this back just a little bit further so at least it's to the end. It'll still um, work fine because they'll still come together. Um, they won't, it, it, it will work, so we'll be fine. You might have thought that I learned my lesson. I must have made these a little bit longer the last time. I thought I measured that pretty well. And actually, I thought, oh, for goodness sakes, actually, um, I thought I had made them kind of too long the last time, and so I wanted to shorten them just a little bit. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'm going to ruin this whole thing if, I, if I'm not careful here. All right. I am so sorry. I am going to put that down here. And we should be good. I'm not closing it again. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take that to the inside and put that so that's covered over. I have edged the side. Oh, no, maybe I didn't. The only thing that I I worry about with the magnets being too close to the edges is uh, the paper not staying down around it. And it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of a battle here with that. But art glitter glue to the rescue. I'll come back at that, I think, and I will, um, I will, um, glue it again and then put some, uh, clothespins or something on it to hold it down a little bit more steady. 
So on this side, we're going to put this right underneath right here. And I know that that magnet is towards the edge of that, but um, nobody's going to see that because it's really underneath and they probably won't even notice it. And then we're going to... Oh gosh. <laughs> were you all yelling at me? Because it was the wrong side. Oh goodness gracious. Good thing I caught that sooner than later. Man. All right. So then what I'm going to do on top of here is I want to put this patterned paper on the top of um, this band. And I again, I just took this from one of the cutoffs. It's from the back of that paper. And this is going to be one and three quarters or not one and three quarters, it'd be one and five eighths by three and three eighths, three and three eighths. So I cut, the, I cut that long enough for, um, to the exact measurements, but, um, I love my pencils. Try to give measurements because I know you guys like that, but I'll be honest, I, I don't like the measurements as much as I like to just kind of wing it with my cutting of my paper. So that looks great. And what we're going to do is um, Put this down then we're going to get our uh, chipboard piece uh, the one that you want to find is the butterfly and also I'm going to put one of the silver gems in the, the hole so we'll get that started So as I was saying before, I had some feedback about some suggestion about the tutorials, which I, again, I, I love it. Thank you very much because I can't, I can't do better at what I do unless I hear feedback from you. Um, not that I'm a glutton for punishment, but I appreciate all the feedback that I do get. Um, if it can be something helpful to make some the viewing better or if you'd like something done, can do that. After we're done with this, I am going to work on one more small project and then I'm going to finish up my tutorials on my G45 Tropical Travelogue because I've got to get that finished. I did not finish that yet because I was working on this. So we've got this. If you want to, you can cut um, three-eighths of an inch um, piece of paper to glue onto there or onto here but um, again it did not sit real well for me um, the paper kept coming off so um, I just my suggestion is just to leave it <laughs> because we've got a navy blue trim all the way around and I think it would be more beneficial to do that my humble opinion and I'm just going to put this down you can um, ink around the edges if you'd like to ink around the edges of the butterfly put a little bit of art glitter glue in there
put those magnets in there. They want to uh, grab right onto my scissors and that little bead. That's funny. It didn't happen the last time. All right. So now we've got that done. What we're going to do is take this and get this into our book. And I'm just going to look one more time to make sure that I am not missing anything. Um, so we're going to... Oh, you know what? I forgot to... Uh, my apologies, I forgot to miter this edge. And I like to do that with the edge of a pocket. So just make sure we get that down. And I watch some people with the art glitter glue and they do such a good job with doing a straight line. And I feel like sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> So we're going to put this down and match it up to our page. On the top and on the bottom. And then what we have to do uh, for this page is I want to cover this inside a piece and what I did on the other album is I really liked this paper and so I wanted to put this in and then I had a strip of um, the green in there as well because I this is a cutoff and um, I just I I didn't want to use another whole sheet of something to cut it differently so this is um, this is going to be, um, it's a nine and a half inch page, so it'll cut at um, nine and three eighths. And the width of this is, again, it's my cutoff, so you can really make this any size that you want to make it. If you only have, let's say, a half an inch, then use a half an inch of this and maybe a half an inch of your green cutoff. So this one right now is two and three quarters inches. So I'm going to um, do that, and then we will see. Looks like I'm going to need a half an inch um, down here, but I'll just measure that out when, as soon as I get that done. All right. Okay, pencil mark, where'd you go? There we are. So besides my Fisker Precision Cutter, um, this is my other favorite cutter for small, small cuts. And um, I know some people have the larger one, which is uh, that guillotine cutter, but I never, I bought the other cutters before, so I, um, I didn't want to buy another whole big um, cutter. I think I have four or five cutters because I can't seem to find one that I really liked until I went back and forth with this Fisker's Precision one and I have to say that it's probably my favorite. I just bought myself a dolly and I like that as well, I, but I don't like it uh, for cutting paper as well as I like it for cutting chipboard. So. And I made sure that I stayed away from the bend or the hinge so that we didn't, we had room and that we, because there's the quarter inch um, gusset right there. And see how that, how that's even taking up a lot of that page in there. So um, what I want to do next is I think what I'm going to do is take um, an inch of this uh, green and um, just an inch and then the length and width of because I did not actually push that um, P 
piece into the, oh, I needed that, yes. I did not put that piece into the pocket as far as I had the other that I do sometimes with other paper. So I'm just going to, this should be the 9 and 3 eighths again by 1 inch, and I'm going to get this lined up. And what I want to do is I want to cut this and line it up with my paper on the other side here. So I want to make sure that I'm fitting, um, it's a pretty good fit, even though it's going under the pocket a little bit. I want to make sure that the, it lines up with the other piece of patterned paper. And that's pretty good. So I am going to take that. And I'm I don't want to don't need to uh edge the inside piece that's going into the pocket. Nobody's going to see that. So make sure that this goes in. Here. Give ourselves a little bit of wiggle time. best I could do here. So there we go. We've got a little bit of an edge in the middle there. That's exactly what I what I would like. So that is this page done with the exception of doing the mat. So we're going to do that real quick. And that mat was done uh, seven and three quarters by eight and a half. Now this is not like you have to do it this size. This is just the size that I did. So then I took and I rounded the edges and I used um, my corner punch. And on this one I used the larger corner punch. and Or maybe, no, I used the medium one. And um, just cut it for a sixteenth of, or I mean an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around so that um, then the pattern paper was cut at seven and five eighths by eight and three eighths. And we're going to put that down. Now, the back of this mat, I did some um, matting of paper and photo, uh, photo places. And um, like I said before, I am not going to do that. Now we'll do that, I do that towards the end because I want to be able to utilize my scraps for doing that. So, and you may want to do it completely different than how I do it. So, um, you can feel free to do that. <laughs> so on here, what I ended up, what I ended up doing was putting one of the stickers. This was a sticker, I believe, yes, and I put some navy blue cardstock behind it because I wanted to be able to tuck into there as well. But this is how I matted on the back of here. And I probably will do um, exactly the same as what I did on here because I like the way this looks. Uh, but again, I want to wait and use my scraps and not cut up uh, larger pieces. So, so you know what that looks like. And this mat then fits right into our pocket here and we are good to go on that side. So then if we go to, this is page two um, and you can see I've got a little bit of edging here. I'm going to have to cut that down. But this page two is then, um, worried myself, I thought I had it wrong. This is going to be a fairly simple page. Um, what this one is going to be, we're going to put this uh, color, uh, solid color down, and we are going to do a belly band on here. And um, so with the belly band, um, I want to, let me, let me just do this and match it up again, make sure I didn't 
do something wrong like I did before. All right. is a messy crafter. <laughs> I just seem to get everything all over the place and I just decided I'm not going to apologize for it. It's just the way it is. So that's going to go on to there. This will go underneath the paper. Yeah, it's the right. Okay, so this was cut at five and a half by ten and a half. And you're going to score a half inch at both sides. And I did not, um, I did not miter the edges of this because I was putting it underneath the paper. So the last time when I made this, what I ended up doing, which I had a lot of difficulty with, <laughs> um, I put the mat or this belly band down first, and then I. Uh, put the paper underneath it. So what I am going to try to do this time, let's see how it works. I want to I'm gonna line this up on here and this is nine and three eighths. So two and a quarter. For a little bit further. So we have one and a quarter, three quarters, one and three quarters. That's pretty, that's pretty good. So what I am going to do is I'm going to pull this down and I'm just going to line this up on here. And I'm going to glue this to the back of the paper. And then we will put the whole thing down. How about that? You think that'll work? <laughs> if it doesn't, it'll be another mistake you can talk about. <laughs> oh. oh, it's good. It's good to laugh at ourselves. I think we take ourselves way too serious most of the time. So then what we're going to do on here is I cut uh, this paper and I wanted to see where I landed on here um, because I really wanted this to um, have this part that says life is sweet and so that it was on the belly band and I didn't want to cut too much of this away. so. But I think I'm going to, and I'll give you the measurements. So it must, it'll be nine and, well, it might be just shy of nine and three eighths because of the fact that um, um, the, the belly band. All right. So this is going to be. Um, nine and three eighths, just shy of nine and three eighths. And this is um, five and three eighths. So that is our measurements. Making sure we get that right side up and this is going to be right side up as well. figured after all that putzing around on that other page I needed to have something on the back of here that wasn't so, uh, didn't take so long to do. Needed easy ones and harder, not harder, it's not hard, it's just a little more time consuming. So.
There we go. We've got that done. So we are next going to get our page and we are, yep, I vintage photoed all of the edges and we are just going to go around this and we are going to put our page down. Oops, not quite that high. You rip your paper up as much as I do. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems like it doesn't want it to do what I want it to do sometimes. I think, I think, I think. I think I used up all the glue on it from tearing it up. <laughs> okay, one more time. Concentrate. I don't know why that gets off when I know that the paper is cut properly and sometimes it just goes on at an angle well we're going to leave that that is the best I've done <laughs> do a little bit more especially on the edges want to do a little bit more so what we're going to do then we have a mat that's going to go underneath that and this mat is a nine by nine and I use the large corner rounder uh, on this one and I did that with the pattern paper as well and um, this uh, paper is eight and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. And again, on the back of here, I did photo mats, but we will wait to do that at the end. And you're welcome to go ahead and do any of that that you want to do ahead of time. You don't have to wait for me to do any of those things, or even if you want to jump ahead on some different things, don't feel like you have to wait for me on this. So on that mat, um, let me see if I can pull that out of my book. Um, on the back of that mat, I did this. So, and I left this up for a picture to be tucked underneath and some of the paper up there and stripped down there. So, um, that's what I'm going to probably do again on the back of my mat. But you're welcome to do whatever you would like to do on your back of your mat. If you want to put paper on the back, you can do that as well. So there's our full page one or hinge one, but it's page one and page two. So that's done for this evening and we will come back and work on hinge two next. The other thing though that um, I had talked about before, and we're going to, I have some of this yellowish paper um, so I'm going to work on putting this together, and I'll show you that next time when we get back together. I don't want to uh, run this out too much longer. So, um, But this will be 
well, I'll have this done next time and I'll show you what I did and where I put it um, because I found this scrap. This was the brighter and the rustier toned. And you can wait uh, for another scrap. I just have had this sitting here for a while, so I wanted to get it on my uh, cover and so that I'm done. So, alrighty, folks, thanks so much. Um, if you enjoyed the tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave comments down below if there's anything that you'd like to see more of or you'd like some help on or something that I didn't uh, finish up quite right. Um, I thank you so much for joining me. Truly, truly, I thank you. Have an awesome night. Thank you.